everybody. Welcome back to another allcounselors.com live event. Today, I'm excited to talk about this. Now, um, starting your private practice, and we have put together, at, the team at All Counselors put together this really highly interactive uh, worksheet for you that I put a link in the chat for you to download. Um, it's a fillable PDF, meaning you should download it, put it on your computer's desktop, open it back up, and then you can actually type in your words, and I'll show you that in just a second. But um, I'm excited for this uh, webinar today because I know many of you are just starting your private practices, and I want to, we at All Counselors want to help you. So um, first and foremost, let me tell you real quickly who I am and why I might be qualified to talk on this subject. My name is Corey Miller. I'm the founder of, co-founder and CEO of allcounselors.com. Uh, in 2008, I started a company called iThemes, software company essentially, and uh, started, built, grew that company to be a multi-million dollar software company over 10 plus years. In 2018, we were acquired. I worked for that company for another year and left in 2019, but one of my core passions in life is mental health and how I fulfill part of that passion and calling in my life is by helping you, therapists to um, be able to take some of the nuances, the frustrations, the little irritations out of just running the private practice and helping people heal in the world. I, our team at All Counselors wanted to take as much as we can off your shoulders from like business marketing and technology to help you in your practice, to focus on the key part of what you do every single day, which is help people in their healing journey. Um, I'm a teacher coach, I'm a mentor on digital marketing and entrepreneurship. Uh, I've got several projects uh, going right now, startup projects and existing businesses too. After leaving my, my, uh, my first love, my first company um, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now. And again, I said, you know, my life purpose is to obliterate the stigma around mental health and to point people to you to go sit down with a counselor like I did back in, let's see, it's been 2010 when I walked into a counselor's office for a the first time in a very long time and got that healing that um, healing journey started and I have a counselor I see now every two weeks um, but uh, I, I you know I love what you do in the world and want to help you special thanks for putting on this webinar today is Integrative Life Center they're based in Nashville Tennessee they do substance abuse eating disorders but also broad mental health uh, work so if you have someone that you need to refer uh, that needs a little bit more intensive help. Integrative Life Center is amazing. I've been there several times on their campus. Um, they have very good practices in place for COVID too, but they uh, accept in-person residential um, clients today. IntegrativeLifeCenter.com. You can learn more about them. And if you if you have questions about ILC, please let us know at All Counselors. I'll share my email a little bit later, but thank you to ILC for helping put on this free training for you. Okay, real quick. So the outcomes from this is we, we have talked to dozens of therapists. We've done our research um, and found that a lot of just starting new counselors, I mean, the biggest question that we found is, uh, how do I get clients? You know, um, you go through, and by the way, I'm married to a, a budding counselor. She graduates this month with her degree, and then we'll start um, studying for the exams and doing our supervisor, supervisory work. Is that how you say it? Super, anyway, I'm butchering that, but you know what I'm talking about. So uh, one of your flock is I, I live with and love and adore. So I, with this, I want to help you kind of answer, ask and answer some of the key questions to start and grow your private practice. It's one of the key things we hear from counselors, one of the things we see from our research too. And so this is going to be highly, inter, uh, highly practical for you today. I have put a link in the chat to this worksheet. Starting and Growing Your Private Practice, the workbook part of this. And I'm going to be going through this in a second, but you can see here, you can actually enter things in. You want to download this first uh, into onto your desktop and then open it and start to fill it out. And you can save that on your desktop. But the outcomes are, you know, so much of this, you, you spent so much training in mental health, and I'm so glad for that, right? <laughs> right? 
but likely the school that you went to didn't teach you or share anything about how to actually start a practice, the nuts and bolts of building a business and growing a business, sustaining a business, all those little nuances. And so this is your primer. Um, and so we put the workbook together in this presentation today to help you walk through that, to give you more confidence. So at the end, you should you should feel more confident to at least have the start of a basic plan. And I'm going to give you some homework too, by the way. So those are some of the outcomes, but we want you to be get started on the right foot and have the best chance to um, make a great living uh, doing your work as a helper in the world. Um, we have a mantra at All Counselors, by the way is that if you do good in the world, you should do well in the world. We, we don't shy away from, we, we want you to make good money and great money and a lot of money if you do really good work in the world. And I know you do as therapists and counselors and, and clinicians. So with that, let's get, let's get rolling. The first thing you'll see in the workbook is goals and objectives. And by the way, if you have questions, hit the Q&A button or the chat. I'll be watching those as we go. Because again, this is intended to be highly highly helpful to you. I want you to make progress and answer your key questions. So please let me know. Um, okay, goals and objectives. So I always start out when I'm talking about any budding entrepreneur, I always start out, what do you want to do? You know, what, what, you know, business unlocks something for you, some dreams, some aspirations. So what do you want to accomplish? And it really starts out with, you know, obviously you, you're probably passionate about being a helper, um, being a therapist and helping people on their healing journey, but, you know, nuance that what, what really, you know, what, what is the fulfillment you get from doing the thing you do in the world? And I like to start here because if you know what you um, are most interested in, we can, you can help guide what you do in your practice to meet those people, those prospective clients, those type of ideal clients that you can help and work with most, but, you know, that could also be uh, the modalities. You know, what things do you really, really like uh, doing in the actual practice of therapy work? What do you want to offer? And so all of these are really good. The homework I'm going to tell you ahead of time is take this weekend, take a weekend. And if you're married or have a significant other, do this together, walk this through. Starting a business is tough work. It's, it's, uh, it's very tough. You've been through all this education, all this certifications and testing and all this stuff. And you get to this point and it's like, okay, I'm ready to start my private practice at some point. Um, these things are so foundational. So always start with goals, objectives, but really passions. And then um, what, what kind of impact do you want to do out there? This one is a good question. So you can go through this on your own. I won't belabor this because I want to see if you have questions and I can help you through this. But um, so starting with what do you really want to, to do in your work. Um, but some of these, I know this might be hard for you and I love your feedback on it too, but is what makes your practice, private practice, if, if you're just, if you're planning out your practice or you just kind of get started or you're early in your private practice, how do you stand out? What are the things that you offer that maybe others uh, in your, you know, region don't offer or your state? I know, you know, licensure is pretty much state by state now. There's some reciprocity, I think. But, um, you know, what differentiates you in the, in the market? And uh, I'm going to use business terms, by the way, because running a private practice is a business. And I think you need to approach it seriously and with thoughtfulness. And so, um, I, again, the do well uh, do good in the world and do well in the world. I don't apologize for talking about marketing because I believe if you are doing good in the world, you have a, you have an obligation to market, which is simply sharing your message of what you do and how you can help people. So what is different or unique? Uh, that could be modalities. Say, for instance, you offer, you know, you do EMDR with your patient, your clients, um, or you focus on, you know, marriage and uh, relationships. Um, and then even then try to focus, what is the one thing that you do that you emphasize or is helps you to stand out? So if it's, let's say marriage and, uh, relationships. So what is that? Is it faith-based, you know, marriage and therapy, marriage and relationship counseling or something like that, but think through all those things it could be modalities. It could be all that, but in any business, you want to be able to stand out from the crowd. You want to be able to showcase 
your specialties too and the things that make you distinctive. Um, you've probably already been thought of thinking about price, but see how this is all just really, it's just prompting you. These questions that we've given you are prompting you to at least put something down. And by the way, in 2008, when I started my first first full-time business, um, I probably had more the napkin version, napkin version of a business plan. Here, all we're trying to do is get you a foot to just think about things that you might not have think, thought about, uh, the gaps, and to fill those in. And so um, the, what's the right price to sustain your business? So the easiest way to say is, what do I need to make in a year? You know, so it's $50,000 or $100,000. Uh, and then, and then um, uh, divide by month and then get down to what's realistically, you know, how many hours can I see clients? And if you have veteran uh, therapists in your network, and I hope you do, and that's part of what we want to do at our counselors is build this community of veteran therapists that have been out there that want to share their wisdom uh, and help pull new therapists um, into our community to help them walk with business and marketing and technology helps. Um, can you deliver on your vision? How do you deliver it? So we're in the era of COVID as I'm giving this, uh, giving this training. And so likely it's a mixture of remote or telehealth, um, telehealth therapy, uh, and maybe a mixture of person depending on in person, depending on where you're at, but how will you deliver it? Now, as a tech entrepreneur, um, I'm very happy that if there are positives that have come out of the pandemic, one of them is that tech, the use of technology in the mental health industry, I'm very excited about because the tools are there and they're getting better and better. I'm able to do this. You're, you're listening in from all over parts of the nation and perhaps the world. And that is amazing. Now I know there's licensing things and stuff like that you have to deal with, but you know, or, or work around, um, but how do you deliver it? You know, and I, you may be opposed to, to telehealth or remote therapy long term, but how do you deliver the services? Um, and that could also mean not just technology or in person, knee to knee, you know, breathing the same air, but it could be workshops, intensives, um, those type of things. What other uh, ans ancillary services do you do you offer? Um, so think through this. Think through. Uh, I believe it's called EAP, but you know, do you offer something for businesses or organizations to have access to your uh, therapy services? So I like to think about as an entrepreneur about ancillary services because it's likely you'll draw your main income from one-on-one -on -one client work, but do you do also do group work, paid group work? Um, do you offer consulting. As an entrepreneur, at one point, I actually engaged a counselor to help me with some, and our team, with some team dynamics. So what are the other things besides, let's say, your core thing is one-to-one -one, uh, therapeutic uh, uh, services? What else would you might be interested or could provide and write those down? Okay, now, second thing is clients, and I won't go back to our slides. I'll just use this as our base, but um, clients, who do you want to serve? And I, I realize that um, you may have qualms about it. You go, hey, it's whoever comes to my door and knocks, I want to help all people. But uh, the practicality of being a business is that you will likely serve a set population of people, mostly. You know, a lot of therapists that I work with, um, you know, perhaps are in the suburbs. So they're serving a different type of clientele. They've got maybe higher income. They're, here's some of the sets of things. But really, if you just push away for that second and say, who do you want to work with? Maybe you discover through your internship, your supervision, or if you've been working with an agency or another practice, um, who do you derive the most fulfillment from? Who do you help? And, and start to write those things down. <clears throat> And the practical business reason you do that is because you can coordinate some of your marketing efforts to make sure you're reaching those people. Um, and and uh, I know you'll have a heart for a certain set, maybe group of people, however you identify them. And, and so putting that down, it just helps so you, in your marketing efforts. Yeah, and in order to using it identifiable. In marketing, most times we talk about uh, demographics age, uh, sexual, uh, uh, gender, um, marital status or relational status, um, those type of things. But once you start to drill down, this is the type of composite 
person, you know, type of person or persons I can help. Now, what are the common characteristics they have um, together? And are they easily identifiable? And I bet you, if you start thinking through those people in your mind, some of the clients you dealt, you've worked with in the past, that they probably have some um, common themes, you know, and, and really to, in today's therapeutic world, it, because of the licensing and certifications and things like that, I know it's, it's, it's probably the first step is a ge geography, um, except if you're doing a lot of remote work, like I'm based in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So this is our largest metro, but if you're doing remote ter therapy, you might be serving somebody in a smaller town, you know, an hour and a half away, but still in the same, same state. So write all that down. Easy to reach. You always want to find, be able to find somebody easy to reach. And by the way, I'll say on the getting clients and who you serve, we just did a webinar training. You can find in the, um, in the vault at allcounselors.com. If you sign up for our membership, um, you can find that training on um, five tips, the five tips for digital marketing um, that don't cost a fortune. That's in the library. What are they looking for? The common things, you know, um, and I think you might be tempted as a, a therapist and clinician to say like, well, they need help. You know, they need, they're, they're trying to solve some issue that's going on in their life. Perhaps it's a crisis or something, but I bet you, if you think about the people that you serve and these ideal clients, they have common again, things they need, they come to your doorstep for. Write all of those down because over time, this will shift. This will get clearer, but this is a first step to doing that. And so when you know what they're looking for and these type of things, you can do messaging on your website and your marketing that helps draw, showcase that, hey, I'm speaking to you. These are, this is right. If you're, if you're suffering with these particular things, I'm, I'm your person. And you fit this kind of profile, perhaps even, you know, it helps in your marketing. Um, niches, industries, people, you can see all that stuff. I don't want to belabor that point. But uh, do you have any contacts in the field uh, or experience with them? So, okay, that is clients. Clients is big. You know, picking who, um, who you work with is a key thing in any business. And in, in fact, when we've thought through what we're doing at all, counselors.com, um, you know, we think, we think about, you. We think about uh, the types of therapists we can help best, and that helps us to really um, focus what we're doing for you. So same goes for your private practice. Marketing this is one of my favorite items, and I know sometimes it causes therapists and clinicians to cringe, but I love marketing. I feel like if you do really good work in the world, you have an obligation responsibility to share that message with others and to say, like, here I am. I can, I can serve you in some capacity. Um, so now we're really down into how do you reach them? You know, is it a Facebook page? Is it a profile on Psychology Today or another directory? Um, how are you going to reach those clients? Is it primarily based on referrals? A lot of the clinicians we talked to um, built their entire practice on referrals. You know, maybe there's a clinician you know in your area who is maxed out, can't take any more clients, but would be willing to refer people to you. And so put that down here. Those are keys. Everything helps, especially when you're starting your, your practice out, your business out. Okay, this is something I really love is that educational content. So you spent years training for what you do. And so it's likely you've got those areas of expertise we talked about here up, up above about fulfillment and things that you really like enjoy and that you find you can help your clients with best. Um, this is an opportunity in your marketing efforts to potentially um, maybe it's start a blog or a podcast or post, you know, Instagram is pretty, there's a lot of uh, therapists, counselors, clinicians on Instagram, for instance, and some big brands on there using that. So, you know, what content could you do? Have you written a paper? Have you, uh, you've got a little ebook and all that stuff are things that we want to offer you and we're interested in hearing more about uh, through all counselors and how we can help you. Educational content. Um, how much will it cost? So you go, okay, maybe, maybe it's, uh, you know, as uh, in your ideation phase here, maybe it's, you know, I got to have my business card, you know, on, there's this restaurant down the street from here and they have all, uh, you know, the tables are basically ads or something. I don't, I'm not suggesting it necessarily, but how much did that, does that cost? 
How are you going to reach those people and how much does it cost? So if you only say up here, how are you going to reach ideal clients? I'm going to get referrals. It's going to cost you maybe not financial um, to get those referrals, but it's going to time to build relationships with those referring therapists or other professionals in your field. How many clients do you need to sustain? What I like about this is to say, okay, find a round number, you know? So we've done some work on our goals and talked about our finances and what we need to potentially um, bring in every month to pay your bills. And so breaking that down by your hourly rate or however you charge to say, okay, I need 40 clients. I like, I like to break numbers down as small as I can to go, this is not overwhelming. I just need to think all I have to reach is 40 people a month and probably not because some are going to be com consistent like me. I go to my counselor every two weeks and even in the past have gone more regularly. So I'm a repeat, repeat client um, for, for my counselor. So how many clients do you need to uh, reach and sustain in your business? And one month would be a good benchmark and say, okay, I need to consistently make sure I'm reaching, let's say it's 40 people. That helps you think through and right size like it's not overwhelming, it's 40 people. How do I get my first 10? How do I get my next 20? How do I get my 30 and 40, all that? So how many clients do I need to sustain business? Do some math on that and just think, by the way, this is all penciled in. It's just for you to have something, a basic plan. A lot of people will ask you questions as you're starting your practice. This is just another tool again to help you have something, answers for some of those questions, or at least the start of something. How do you generate leads? Again, that might be referrals or my Facebook page or my, I wrote a book and it's on Amazon or something like that. And then um, how do, value proposition is essentially here in number six on this area is essentially uh, the, how, what value do you offer to me? Uh, now I know this can get tricky a little bit, but you know, think through uh, healing Think through all the different things that you do in your practice that are benefits to your clients, you know, and maybe that is part of that is let's say you want to dive in and wholly embrace telehealth and remote therapy. Well, that is, you don't have to drive 30 minutes in traffic to get to my office. You can do it right here. And by the way, my, my counselor a couple of months ago with, with COVID, you know, went, went fully to telehealth. I hope selfishly he never he always offers that because I even though he's only 10 minutes down the street from me it's still getting in the car it's it's now December so one day it could be snowing for instance and I'd have to get in the cold and maybe wipe off some ice and drive in and and you know I'd prefer that so so if that's something you do and you want to do that's part of your value prop proposition Number seven, of course, you've got ethical things that you have to do, and that's a good thing and part of your practice, but represent your, your best work while uh, maintaining confidentiality and privacy. So maybe you don't, maybe you anonymize uh, a particular case study you're talking about on your website or come up with uh, one thing I suggested. And again, the disclaimer here is you need to, you need to make your own decisions and, and with the things that you have to do as part of your ethics and, and, and compliance and things like that with your um, licensure. But maybe it's a composite sketch. Like we've just talked about previously, a group of people that in your mind, these are the people I love to work with, or, you know, and they find the best healing and results and steps forwards and all that thing kind of thing. But um, through that, you could say, maybe you come up with a composite sketch of um, a per, you know, like a type of person, but it's not an actual person, it's just a composite sketch of, okay, here's, here's a case study example. And again, I'm gonna leave that to you for the legal and ethical um, implications of how you share that. But how do you represent your best work uh, on online, maybe, and in your marketing? That's a key thing. Finances. This is the one I don't always like to talk about personally as an entrepreneur, because I like to make enough money where I don't have to Think about, okay, but it is so critical to uh, your business. I'll tell you, a couple of your key partners in business, uh, I believe, are going to be some familiarity or connection to a lawyer to help you get set up, to help you with your, uh, however you uh, incorporate your legal entity of your practice. And I highly, highly, I'm not a lawyer, but I highly suggest you do it. And I'm sure you're already in that mindset as you start to build a private practice. But 
a relationship with a lawyer is a key thing. The second related to this particular section is an accountant, a bookkeeper, someone that knows how to properly keep your books in order and help you prepare for taxes. I cannot stress too often, and not just clinicians, private practice clinicians, but entrepreneurs cheap out on hiring a bookkeeper. They try to do it themselves. And I'll tell you, um, I've, uh, I, I've had a bookkeeper for 10 years now, I guess. And um, well, longer than that, but an, a professional, someone that this is what they do in the world. They help people with their books and things. And we just engaged a new uh, accountant this month, actually. And it's just a relief to know I get as, as uh, Rachel is our accountant as she's doing her book. She's also advising me about best practices of uh in view of taxes because she also do, does my taxes and she even passed this on to me and i'll share it with you is uh, whoever does your business taxes should probably do your personal taxes okay and some legal entities again disclaimer i'm not a lawyer but some legal it, it setups how you do it, legal entities flow through straight to your personal taxes this is why you want a cpa someone that is certified just like you are to do your finances. And uh, it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg, but please, please, please consider getting a CPA to help you with your finances, to manage your money, to, to bounce things off of. I like to have a collection of experts that I can call at any time in a lot of different areas, but legal and financial are two key areas I don't cheap out on. I have a lawyer, business lawyer I can call and I have three times this year uh, on different projects. We have enough of a relationship. I'm not having to start over. By the way, does this sound familiar? It's the same reason I share as just an entrepreneur, not a clinician, not a mental health pro, that you should have a, a relationship with the therapist because when you know everything bottoms out in your life, you don't want to have to go back and like start from scratch with a counselor. Uh, this is why I say keep an ongoing relationship with the therapist. It's just other people do. Same thing for a lawyer and, and an accountant. So, okay, I think I've hit the point home. How and when will you get paid? Um, a lot of clinicians that I've talked to um, still do, you know, checks, for instance, or cash. I'll tell you, and they always balk, and this isn't just clinicians, it's also any entrepreneur, they balk at, well, I don't, I don't want to do an online thing like Square or take a credit card because they'll take 3% out. I don't know about you, but I like to get paid. I like to get paid fast. I like the money to be sitting in my account as fast as possible. I don't mind 3%. It's a convenience fee for me to make sure I have money. So if you're not taking electronic payments through a, like a Square uh, type of option, Square Up, um, I think is the domain or, um, you know, there's things on your phone. You can even apps you can get and they'll give you a card reader. Even PayPal does this. Um, I, I highly suggest it because again, I want, I want the ca cash flow is a key cash flow is oxygen for your business and getting that cash in your bank account and having access to it is so key. Um, so please consider that only for the convenience factor and having that oxygen in your account as fast as possible. So an accountant will also help this. So if you pay others from your landlord, if you have an office uh, to expenses. Um, and, and again, the reason why I say accountant is because I want you to think, I want you to focus on what you do best. And it's the practice of what you've done for therapy, for healing in the world and helping other, others in their journeys. And I don't want you to think that maybe you can do your own taxes, but to me, it's a frustration for me to try to learn the tax code every year, which changes. Rachel, my CPA, who I've known for a very long time, she takes care of that. That's her mastery. And she gets to give me advice for that. So how will you pay others? 1099 contractors, your rent or software or things you need for your practice and your taxes. Having that accountant, hope I beat the horse dad here. What are your expenses? So um, think through that. You're going to, you know, put every start a spreadsheet, start listing everything out. You can Google budget, you know, budget tools for personal stuff, and they can equally apply for business. Um, and in fact, like for instance, insurance. So you you need health insurance. You maybe have to go to the um, the ACA, the healthcare exchange. Um, list everything you can list. Do you need to print things? Do you need some software to keep your records? Um, do you have a monthly um, office payment. 
Are you going to have to buy a computer? List all those one-time and recurring expenses out. And you, again, you can you can Google uh, some spreadsheet. There are tons and tons of tools to get a budget. They, even if they have personal budget, you can apply those uh, categories to your practice. Okay, cash cushion here. So cash cushion, um, you'll likely at some point want to start a business bank account. So when you get those checks, however you take your cash or you get the deposits, they can be deposited in your business account and, and then on regular basis be dispersed to your personal. You want to keep separation of church and state. <laughs> business expenses over here, apart from my personal expenses, don't use your personal business as your um, discretionary personal spending stuff. You want to you want to create in conjunction with the CPA and accountant a structure where you disperse this money over to your personal and then you pay for personal things over here. You pay for business things over here. Keep those separate. A good business attorney, I'm not a business attorney, will tell you keep those separate. But cash cushion, sorry, I got off track there. But cash cushion is how much money do you need to keep in your business account to pay for things? Um, at some point, if you're able to, let's say your significant other spouse can help you as you're getting off your ground, you know, per, pay for your personal expenses over here. Maybe you can get a couple of months and get some cash cushion in your account to be able to pay for things like your liability insurance, your office rent, or whatever other expenses you have. I like having a good, healthy cash cushion. It's called retained earnings sometimes in, in my business account because I don't know what might happen and I don't want to have to do a contribution from my personal. I don't want to disperse money over here and I have to put it right back for things. So I keep some cash cushion in all of my businesses uh, over here um, for things so I can pay, keep those separate, keep expenses and be able to pay things like if you have you have an assistant or um, you have other things to be able to pay, pay that person. But here specifically, the cash cushion to go full time is, you know, think through what's your, what's your confidence uh, what, what's your comfort level of the cash cushion you need to be able to pay your expenses that we've been trying to document through here and also get by the, the lean times. Uh, in most businesses, there's highs and lows financially of revenue. You know, um, I don't know how, where it is in, in, um, with therapists, like, is there a, a down season of time, you know, is it in the summertime In my software business, it was in the summertime, but we, our theory was it, it, it sloped down and it ramped up during the winter months. Uh, our our, our uh, theory was in the summer months, people don't want to be in front of the computer. In America, mostly, we take our vacations, by and large, during the summer. So we get a lot of out-of-office emails and our sales dip during the summer. So we bank cash up into about May. Memorial Day was kind of Memorial Day to Labor Day in the U.S. was kind of our two little things. That was going to be our signals it's, we're going to start a low period and we're going to end our low period here in Labor Day. Theory is school's out during the summer, um, typically in non-pandemic years. Um, and, and you know, people are on vacation, but it ramps back up kind of timed around Labor Day with our school. So you, you want to be watching for that. And that's where some of this cash cushion can help you too. And then starter investments, laptops, you know, computers, uh, internet, um, Business internet is very expensive, at least in Oklahoma City here through Cox Internet. Um, I pay more for uh, my internet here because I want really good internet, um, but it's already more expensive than my home internet because um, I need it than I do for this office, by the way. So it's crazy. So think through those starter investments that you need to make. And those are more the one-time items. Okay, that's finances. Next, legal. How do you structure your practice and keep it legal? I highly recommend, because I am not an attorney, will never pretend to be one, that you get a business attorney that you can ask other therapists, clinicians in your field, who do you use? Someone that's at least enough familiar with maybe your work that they can help you uh, not just give you, you know, get your LLC or however you structurally, you know, in your state, you set up that corporate uh, structure, but can advise you in those things and maybe has other clients in, in those and has uh, navigated with other people some of those issues that might be nuanced in your field. And so um, I highly recommend and then just every maybe 
twice a year or something. You just ping them and just just uh, kind of keep up to date and keep the contact fresh so that if you have a question or a need, a big need, and hopefully you never do, you have somebody to at least call. Uh, I've had a good dear friend who was my go-to business lawyer. And uh, he got, he is in the reserve Marines. I think you say that right. And was deployed to Afghanistan earlier this year when I had a big deal coming through that I needed his help on. He's overseas. <laughs> so I had to go looking for it. And that, so I remember how tough that was to start and maintain that relationship. So please, please, I, I, I implore you to find someone that you can lean on that you can have, you know, regular enough contact with and familiarity with what you do so that when something comes up after your initial um, uh, start of your corporate, you know, uh, structure that you can, you know, bounce things off of. Uh, even if you have to pay, you know, a 15 minute increment, a bill on something, it's good to be able to just call somebody in and just ask a question. You know, maybe some of the therapists you might know in your field have contracts and agreements they can share with you. And then, but if not, that business attorney helps you you do all that. And then the ongoing help here, we said here. Okay, so that's legal for just a second. It's just having somebody in your corner when you need it. People and partners. So whose help do you need? What pitch, big picture help do you need? And what kind of day-to-day -day help do you need? Do you need someone to help you run your office or schedule clients? Now, I'll tell you, there is is online appointment booking software online. Most of the telehealth remote therapy video stuff has it involved. We're going to do some reviews on that at all counselors too as well. Um, but, you know, what are the things that you need from a day-to-day -day partners? We talked about lawyers. Uh, we talked about accountants. Um, who, who else might you need? Uh, liability insurance. Who's that person? Keeping that contact up to date. Um, and maybe they can help you with other things like trying to find from the marketplaces some good health insurance for you and your your family if you have one. Um, but I, I think about this, this people and partners, I want to take a second and just say, I, um, this is critical for me, people and partners. I think about it like this, and I hate to say it like in a dooms way, but it's, it's, it's really key and it's helped prepare me for the worst. I was in Weeblow's. At some point in my life and so be prepared is always my little motto um but if the bottom falls out in your life and your practice whatever else who are the people you need who are the people that are going to run into your life when everybody else runs out um we've covered two huge bases you know accountants with financial stuff including taxes and lawyer with god forbid you ever have to deal with a lawsuit but is there just think about that if everything bottoms out who would i need then you start to think through your team that you need. I need a banker. I need an insurance person. I need, you know, who are those people? Big picture wise, if everything bottoms out, this is one that just helps me fill in the gaps. I did this. It felt morbid at the time, but I did this as a part of my business. And it made me think, you know, who I'm missing is people that have access to money, to capital. Uh, now, that was for my software business back in the day, and I was thinking, well, I'm, I'm going to start building relationships with those people. Please put that down here, you know, and it's not just the, you know, the bad stuff. It's the good stuff. It's the things like w what happens when I don't have enough uh, bandwidth to see clients and I want to hire my first therapist. Who would I need? Would I need an HR person? Just think through those type of things. And, and again, I'm just trying to help you be a good weeblo like me is be prepared. Now, um, again, this is version one of your plan, okay? And I like to put it down here in something and to have it and then come back to it every quarter, maybe even every year and just say, okay, what's changed? You know, what things do I need? Uh, so last section here is accounting software. Do you need that? Um, like QuickBooks, for instance, um, I, our CPA I talked about with Rachel, I'm happy to provide her information to you as well. Um, she has a QuickBooks account and it's, I want to say it's like $15 account through, through her. And I'm like, e -e, that's very easy to me. So then I can go in, we can look at the financials, the books together and see how it's going. There's another, I'll throw in another reason you might, you need to have an accountant is because they can also, you can also go ask this question. What are you seeing? Like you've been doing my books. What's, you know, when you're doing your review with them or whatever, it's like, Hey, I, I said this to Rachel last week. I said, Rachel, what do you see? 
you know, and she'll give me some insights and she'll go, I don't know your business, but I see these things. And I go, I, I don't want you to, I don't want you to be as embedded as me. I want you to come in as your expert outside opinion and say, do you, you see in sales trends? Um, what, what things do you see? Cause I want to prevent my blinders. I want to get perspective from other people and invite experts into my life for that insurance billing. So, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, for instance, or Aetna or whatever insurance you bill, do you need, you know, tools for that computers and software we talked about C continuing education and, and training i'll give you a blur we are working right now for continuing education unit ceus at allcounselors.com this is one reason i want you to sign up for a free membership if you haven't already because first quarter of next year 2021 we'll be rolling out our fingers crossed our first um, ceus and we're starting with ethics which we have found from our research and talking with clinicians that um, ethics is a great foundational course to start uh, CEU to start with. But we'll be doing more and more of that. But think through how do you get those CEUs that you're required to by your state licensing board to keep your licensure up to date? How much does that cost? COVID has thrown everything for, you know, a lot of the conferences that we used to go to, non-mental health are now being canceled or pushed online. Uh, how much does that cost? Okay. And then finally is what else do you need to, if you get stuck, what do you need? You know, these are just, again, prompts for you um, to help you um, get started on the right foot and have confidence in what you're doing in your practice. So here is your homework. If you have a significant other, a spouse significant other, I highly recommend you take a weekend and you're getting ready, and you're right, you're, you're working for an agency maybe, or another practitioner, or wherever you are in your state, you're working through your supervision, and you're thinking, I can't wait to get my private practice started. Take, take this as a starting conversational tool. Maybe you do your first pass, and then you get away with your spouse or significant other, but if you're single, go do it by yourself on a weekend, and go through the worksheet again, and talk it through, specifically with your spouse, significant other. They are your first partner in business, by the way. My wife, Lindsay, is my first primary and essential partner in business. And so uh, getting in the way. And so when I started my next chapter things with my projects, we, we get, found some time to just talk, to be aligned. What do we want out of our life? Asking some of the first questions we asked above. What do, you, what do we enjoy doing? Um, what, where do we want our life to be? You know, in the future, some sense in the future and talking this through. Now, if you've already done your first pass and then you're meeting with your significant other, you know, on a weekend, you've got a date day or something, you can just kind of get away, wall off and just be you, you too. Or if you're single, just yourself and just get clarity. Maybe you pull in your best friend, just kind of bounce some things off you. Um, just take some time, set aside to think through these things to get the first version of a plan. That's it. Um, because it will change, by the way, as you start to roll your purchase out. Every business I've had, every project I've ever been involved with, uh, the, the strategy, the first version of strategy always changes when you get live action, when you get clients and money and things going, it just, it just changes and, and it's tweaks. And then I would invite you, allcounselors.com is here for you. We, we are serving only clinicians, mental health therapists, counselors. Um, we are here for you. We want to be a resource for you. Um, Ani, my COO, and I and our team and partners are dedicating to make your life awesome and better. And we have some key areas we think we can do that with. But if you have questions, if you just want to share your worksheet with us, I invite you to hit our contact form um, over at allcounselors.com. It's right there. It's that big blue button. And I'll show you. I think it's on this next slide. There's a button right there at allcounselors.com. But you can go to allcounselors.com forward slash join. Join our free membership. Hit the contact button and share. You know, say, hey, I just wanted to share my first version of my business plan primer that you shared and some of those things. And ask questions. We're here for you. So, but let me just say before I, I, we open it up for questions, um, Part of being a part of the membership is the things we're going to plan in 2021 and beyond, CEUs and, and more training like this and business marketing and technology to help you run your practice, to reach more people, to reach more people even better. Um, you're going to want to be a part of the membership. Um, we, we want to help make your life better so that you can go make that important impact in the world. I don't want to be a clinician. 
I just want to help you go out there and resource you and support, serve and support you in what you're doing. Here's some of the things you get and things we're, we're working on, but also here's my email. Um, Corey at allcounselors.com. You can send me an email if you have a question, but share your, share your ver first version of your worksheet. We're here for you at allcounselors.com and thank you so much for being here today.